Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Just gonna cut the intro short on this one because I wanna jump straight into the video. We've got a lot to go through here, so we need to get down into the bones and the basics of everything. Let's go. I search everything, I mean search everything. Um, early game, you really wanna get hold of the loot. Like for example there, it's got a gas analyzer. That is an early quest item for therapist. And you can get a lot of early quest items in these final cabinets, as well as a lot of barter, trade items, crafting items, and items that you can sell on the flea market. Now you really need to make use of searching these containers. Uh, filing cabinets, jackets, exactly there. Like I said, great to search early on. Make sure you can get high tier items really easily. Um, these safes here, you can also get high tier valuable items in that, like treasure items, um, which you can sell to therapist or on the flea market for quite a good price. Also do some good trades for. Here's just another example of searching some filing cabinets, looking what we can get, and especially these jackets as well. Honestly, I want you guys to focus on these a lot. You can really make your money back on these. Now for tip number two, we've got learn the stashes. This is a priority. These stashes are on multiple maps, everything except factory and labs, I believe. However, they may have been added with a new factory expansion, but I'm yet to test that or find any evidence of it. Um, these are very important. I'm just gonna show you the first two styles. This is style one. It's a little blue barrel buried into the ground. Now these can contain all sorts of loot. Uh, there's only a few items that are barred off of the loot balls in here. However, that may have changed with this update as well. Uh, I'll post the patch notes in the description so you guys can all take a look. This is the style two. This is like the trapdoor covered in foliage. I'm not sure if there's a difference between the loot pool of the two, but I get great stuff in both. I'd advise planning your route around these like I do. This is my preferred route on customs. This isn't all of them. However, there are more on other parts of the map. A little bit later on, there is gonna be a map pop up. I'll give a little warning before it does, just so you can pause. But I'm just gonna take you through my little stash route right now. So you can take notes if you want, or just skip ahead. Just pause now if you do want to see the stash map of customs so you can learn the routes and plan your way around it. Just be warned if you do come and loot this spot during the game it is quite high pop early on and you can get people camping on the hills overlooking gas station as well. Keep in mind you do have scav extracts quite close as well, uh, all on this back side of the map where I'm heading now. Your metabolism skill in game helps you stay hydrated and fuller for longer. So passively leveling this up by drinking and eating in raid when you find items is the best and only way to level up actually. Items that you eat outside of raid don't count towards metabolism, so eating everything you find in raid is pretty vital. As you can see, I've got basically a full bag from just looting the stashes. It should stay a priority throughout the whole wipe. Learn them on every map as well, because as your attention levels up, you get better rewards. But just do be careful, because they are very high pop and you will most likely run into PvP there. Tip number three is always save your high tier loot items and quest items for later um, as this will really, really shorten the amount of time that you spend in raids looking for these items. It'll also increase your profits later on when you unlock the flea market, which since 12.11 is now level 20. If you didn't know, um, they've increased the level that you need. So it's gonna be a lot harder for casual players um, and people that can only play a few hours a day such as myself, but this tip still stands. Uh, there's just a lot more things that you'll want to be selling to the actual traders now instead of saving, just so you can make some early money. 
included on screen now are also a few items, uh, high value items that I just missed out because I couldn't purchase them on the wipe day because there was it was so expensive on the flea market. In regards to the graphics card, I'm not too sure where this will lie now since the nerfing of the Bitcoin farm just before the patch. However, there was a mention of tar bank coin. If we'll see this at all, I'm not too sure. But you do need them for mechanic quests, so definitely save these uh, to hand them over to him because that will save you some time. If I was you, I'd pause the screen now, familiarize yourself with these items. There are a few I've missed off, but these are the main sort of things you should be looking for to either save for the flea market, for your hideout, crafting, or for quests. Now just moving over to the other side of things, these here are the sort of valuable and treasure items you can get in the game. These can be found in stashes, duffel bags and mainly the safes as well. Most of these items here are also needed for the capper container which has also had a cap put on it. You need to be level 70 now, also making that harder for casual players but not too many people got that anyway. One thing I would take note of is the cigarettes in the bottom left. You'll need them for the quest bad habits and you also need lucky strikes. Now on to tip number four. Sadly, this is one that I see people not making use of all the time, and it really frustrates me. Uh, Hotkeying is your best friend in this game. It will save your life in a firefight, or if you need to get that cheeky little nade on someone, or if you follow the art of the rat, you wanna hide a gun, make someone think you're unarmed, this is a great way of doing it. Uh, you can put pretty much any three or two slot SMG or pistol in your rig, and then pull it out. Uh, by hotkey in it. Since 12.11 as well, they've also put a soft nerf on bush camping. You can no longer go prone in any bushes except really small ones, and they also slow you down. Every single bush, every single map will now slow you down. And just while the tip of how to underarm throw a grenade is on, I'm going to say this final thing. Like you saw earlier in this clip, please hotkey your meds to so save your life instead of having to open your inventory in a situation where your adrenaline's pumping and you're being shot at. Hotkey those meds. Now onto tip number five. Your skills in Escape from Tarkov are so important. When you first start playing the game, you don't really take into account how important they are. But the more you play, the more you realize that they affect everything that you do. Now my favorite ones to level up are attention, strength, and endurance. So what I'm doing here is I'm looting some PMCs that I've killed. This right now will be leveling my attention and attention is such an important skill because it helps you search things faster so you can get in and out quicker and it also increases the loot rarity on things like stashes, duffel bags, jackets that you search. So it's great. Search everything. This goes back to tip number one so you level up easier. Now strength is even more important than attention. It lets you jump higher, go faster, hit harder and carry more. You can either soft level this by the ways that I'm showing on screen by text or you can hard level this just by throwing grenades or by bringing in an already full backpack which means you'd be overweight and already leveling up. Now lastly we'll be going on to endurance. Uh, this one is the easiest to soft level just by running around generally wearing down your stamina you're going to be leveling this one up. It's the first you'll get elite pretty much. This stim here is a lifesaver. It increases your stamina, so when you need to get somewhere in raid, pop one of these, which also will then in turn get you more XP. And for tip number six, I've got save your dog tags. This is one I make use of all of the time and I've got my friends into the habit of using it as well. There are some great, great barter trades that you can get with your dog tags. And I'd say this is even more relevant now than it was in previous patches as they have increased the flea market cap to level 20. So that's going to take a bit of a grind to get there, a bit of a grind to get yourself some exotic items that you're not finding in raid. So barter trades are the way to go this wipe. Uh, they've really made a switch to the economy and it's, it's good to see. Although it is a bit of a stick in the mud, it's nice to see a change. Uh, with dog tags, anything under level 15, you're sort of going to want to sell. I'd sell it to therapist, maybe see if you can get any little trades with it. But it's the dog tags that are over level 15 that are worth it. As you can see on screen now, you can get some amazing trades like Lucky Scav boxes, which I'd recommend. I'd say that's your first case to go for. It stores your barter items and it saves up so much space. You can also get items cases, you can get armor, you can get weapons. Um, from all different traders as well. Ragman, Peacekeeper has some offers. So save your dog tags, guys. And a lot of these bars are great because it will save you millions of rubles early on in the wipe. 
with buying containers. And coming in at number seven, we've got upgrade and utilize your hideout. And I can't recommend this enough. It's something that I never used to really give attention to. It was added a good few wipes ago now, a good few patches. Um, but it's such a great addition to the game. You can, everything that you make in your hideout is counted as found in raid. So you can create quest items here. Anything you make can be sold on the flea market. It's just a general awesome way to help you push through the wipe. You can make a lot of money here or save your time grinding on quest items like I know I did. Like you can get your first Ledex here, which will get you your first thick case from the therapist quest line. Your workbench, lavatory, med bay, and intelligence center are the most important ones to get upgraded because they give you the best benefits. Uh, there are things late game as well, like the boo generator where you can make moonshine, but that is a lot later into the wipe. See, for example, here we've got things that level your physical skills as well. The library, once you upgrade enough things, you can produce a library, which gives you boosts to all your physical skills as well as the air filtration unit, which is another late game one. You can put filters in, it gives you bonuses. Here's your intelligence center that lets you make way to craft a scav case, which you can give money to, moonshine or intelligence, and scavs wow. will bring you back random loot. This is brilliant, I've got some good stuff here before, even a red rebel. Now, like you've heard me say, all video, you gotta utilize these barter trades. Since the flea market is capped at level 20, you are gonna need to really, really make use of these to get yourself some good items early on. Now, not every single one of them is worth it. Some of them are actually pretty crappy that you lose value for, but I do have my favorite ones, which I'm just gonna be showing across the screen now from all the level one barters. What I'd recommend doing is going onto the trader menu yourself, pressing the second little symbol down on the right of their context menu, and selecting level one up top so you can really just go through all the barters and things and obviously select level one two three if you have more and you want to find out those barters but these are a great way of just getting rid of some of the spare stuff that you might pick up in raid and you're not using and exchanging it for something of high value what i'd really recommend doing this wipe as well is saving up all the weapon attachments you can find decent ones not like all the crappy ones like a random iron sight for a gun you're never going to use or a five round mag for a M700 that you're never gonna go sniping with. Don't do that stuff. Save like hand guards, sights, butt stocks, pistol grips, because uh, they're worth a lot of money and they're also really good for ergonomics and things on your guns. And because obviously flea market is higher, you're not gonna have easy access to them. So you're gonna have to do a lot more searching and looting to modify your weapons early on. But barter trades are also a great way of doing this. I'd also recommend completing gunsmith. I just showed on screen a shotgun that you can do a barter with for two elite pliers and a screwdriver I believe and it's basically gunsmith one quest completed. Now for number nine we've got prioritize your quests these are essential to the game they give you the biggest XP boosts when you're trying to level up your character so this will be great for unlocking the flea market quicker they also unlock exclusive barter trades and barter items as well as quest rewards such as thick cases pre-built guns, bitcoins, etc. They are such a useful part of the game and as long as you can wrap your head around the basics of them and grind about, they're good. They are the best for leveling. Like you've probably already seen on the screen, I'm gonna be including a little infographics and pictures just to show you the items that you'll need, the key you'll need uh, to complete those quests. If you've got friends to play this game with, I definitely recommend trying to grind out the quest with them as it's always easier with two sets of eyes and another gun watching over you. But if not, Go on the wiki, there's some great links on there or YouTube videos. Uh, there's some great guys that do quick, short, simple to the point quest guides. I think Piranha is one of them. Great guy, helped me uh, nearly get my camper container just by watching his videos. Especially good for the gunsmith videos. Definitely recommend his stuff. Now there are new quests added in the 12.11 update, but I've not come across these yet. Uh, there will be other videos out there and as soon as I do, I will probably put out a video about it as well just to give you guys a quick little rundown, but I am going to be behind some people here. And finally coming in at number 10, don't stress. I'm not going to talk too much for this one because I just want you guys to watch the video, but remember, this game's about having fun. It's not a job, it's not a chore. As soon as you stop having that fun, take a break, come back to the game and then keep playing. Don't push that, you crack beans. Here we go. 
Holy shit. shit. Holy shit. 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 sh